Hi, John with eTrailer. Look, if you're ready to flat tow your Chevy, or if you're just looking for a little bit more security, then take a look at Roadmaster's remote battery disconnect switch that we've installed on our 2023 Chevrolet Silverado 1500 Z71. Now, I do want to let you know right off the bat that if you have a diesel engine, this disconnect's not going to work for you. Those, um, those engines have too much of a startup amp surge with them so uh, this one's rated okay and it's rated for the gas motors if you have the 5.3 or the 6.2 um, constant amp rating on this is 200 amps and the surge rating is going to be 600 amps now this particular disconnect switch can be operated remotely it comes with a wired push button switch that we installed inside the driver's compartment um, as far as installation goes, you're kind of looking at it. On these Chevys, it's a little bit uh, tricky to get it hooked up to the battery because of the big fuse plate in here, but we can walk you through that step by step. Um, if you want to see how to install this battery disconnect switch on your Chevy, stick around, we'll show you. First step for the installation is going to be to find a mounting location uh, for the battery disconnect and then make the appropriate hookups here under the hood. Now, there are some rules to mounting this. Um, Basically, it needs to be, obviously with the cable length, it needs to be within reach of the battery. And this also needs to be mounted up and down like this. This is a kind of a, uh, this switch is helped by gravity and it uses gravity as well. So make sure that you mount this um, with the switch in this position here. Today on our Silverado, we're probably gonna be tapping in back here on the firewall. It's metal back there. It's within reach of the positive post of our battery. So this is gonna be our mounting location. Now the two cables on your battery disconnect are gonna be marked for you. Um, one is gonna be for the battery post. That goes to the actual battery itself. The other one, the battery cable, will go to um, wherever you're gonna hook up to the rest of your truck with. On our Silverado today, if we lift up our cover off of our battery, it's gonna expose the positive battery post and then we have a fuse plate here that we're gonna be disconnecting. Um, we're gonna to have to do some modifications to this. This isn't the easiest disconnect uh, to install on this type of truck. So uh, first thing we need to do is disconnect the plate here. You're gonna need a 13 millimeter socket. Now, as long as you're careful um, not to touch your metal wrench to anything else on the truck, you can do this, otherwise, if you're cramped on space, the safest thing to do would be to disconnect the negative terminal on your battery and then proceed with this. Pop that off. Get this plate up. We're just gonna slightly bend that out of the way for now. Now we can remove the battery post. That's gonna take a 10 millimeter socket. Loosen that up. We're going to need to take some tin snips or aviation shears. We need to cut the jump tab off of this. Now with the jump start tab trimmed, what we need to do is rotate our battery clamp um, to fit back down on here, but we're going to have to trim the uh, battery tray up here. So uh, this can be done either, again, with your aviation shears or a razor knife, but we need this to sit flat and be able to uh, clamp down on the battery. Now we'll pull this wire out of the way so we don't trim. I'm gonna use an oscillating tool um, in this instance here. It's gonna give us a little bit of control. And this tab here, I pulled out and I'm able to lift it off the battery. So there isn't anything under here that we need to worry about. So just be careful when you cut this. So this is a tab we cut out. We can test fit this by clipping it back down. We can see that it sits nice and flush. Um, so that'll be good for our connection here. Now we can tighten down the battery post again with the 10 millimeter. take the 
uh, wire marked battery post. And on the Chevy here, they already have a routing um, channel here for this. So we're gonna run this in and we'll make the connection right here and then just use the factory flange nut and tighten this down. The cable that's marked battery cable, this is gonna connect to our plate fuse. We're gonna bring this over. Now the Chevy already has channels built into this. Uh, so the hardware you're gonna get is gonna be a shorter hex bolt. It's gonna have two star watchers and then the nut. This is what we're gonna to use to secure the cable to the fuse plate. So we'll grab the uh, wire marked battery cable and on the Chevys we have a channel that we can run the cable right through here. Make sure you get the factory connector in line there. We're gonna set this. So I've got the bolt and one star washer. I'm gonna run that up from the bottom. And then we're gonna use the other star washer and the bolt and tighten this down. It's gonna be 13 millimeter uh, hardware. So wrench and a socket can tighten this up. You can bend the tab back down. Then we can take the cable marked battery post. And we're gonna run this in. And when we reconnect, you may see some sparks. So try to keep um, try to keep good contact on the battery post here, and then tighten that down with the factory nut, which is 13 millimeter. Now, with our connections made, we can replace the cover, and we can move on to connecting the ground wire. So today we're going to be using a larger terminal. That way, I can hook directly up to the battery negative right here. You'll get a self-tapping screw. If you want to screw in somewhere, um, feel free to do so. This is really just for um, convenience today. And we'll need a 10 millimeter socket to loosen this up. And tighten it back down can run the wiring for the switch. Today we're going to be running this inside the driver compartment. So to get across the engine bay right here, we can just fold this insulation down and kind of tuck it back up and in here. Now we are going to have a fuse holder on here, so we don't want to completely bury that part of it, but we'll get this run across. Um, and if you follow your hood cable, like your hood release, down and in, you're not going to be able to see it on camera, but follow that down. You're going to have a rubber grommet that's in the firewall. You can push that in, and then you'll be able to just go right into the driver's footwell. Now I've pulled the wire through the footwell and then up to this uh, side panel here. Um, this just pops off with these clips. I like putting the, the switch up here. Um, because once the door is shut, we have about uh, at least a half inch of gap in between here and here. This is one of those switches that you don't want to accidentally bump when you're driving down the road. This is going to kill all power to the truck. So I like to set it off um, where it's kind of hidden and it's kind of impossible for you to accidentally bump this. It's also a nice uh, anti-theft feature as well over here. So we need to drill a 5 8 inch hole into this plastic. Um, so we're gonna mark this and drill it out with a step bit. Now I've marked my step bit here in red so I know that when I get down to 5 eighths. Now we can test fit the switch. Just take the uh, nut off the back side of it. That's gonna fit nice. So we can tighten up the back of it. And we can wire up the connector. Now the connector you're gonna get with the kit is gonna have a blue wire and a yellow wire, which for us doesn't make any sense, but I will tell you that the blue wire is gonna be the negative and the yellow wire is gonna be the positive. So you're also gonna get some butt connectors in the kit. So we have this crimped down um, we got the red to yellow, blue to black, 
And then as far as the connector, you're gonna see a spring clip on here. And on the switch on one side, you're gonna have a little tab. So that spring connector goes to the tab here. Just push it in until it clicks. Now that our switch is hooked up, we can install the supplied fuse and we can give our disconnect switch a test. Now this doesn't happen a lot. Um, we went to test our switch and it's not working. And we do wanna let you know that, that we ran into a situation where this switch is wired incorrectly. Um, if we take this off and just reverse the switch around, now our disconnect switch is working correctly. So you have a couple of options here. Um, you could keep it like this, and I would wrap some tape around this to keep it from vibrating loose. It's still a nice tight fit. Or um, you can leave the center blue plug, and you can pull the yellow plug. I'll show you how it's wired correctly. You could pull the yellow plug back out and push it in on this position, and then it would be wired correctly. So. If you're doing this at home and your, your um, disconnect switch doesn't work, check this. Now I've zip tied some of the excess wire back and we can get this panel back installed on the truck. So this is gonna be the final product here. Um, we've got our switch installed here. I think it looks great over here. I also think from a safety standpoint, uh, this is pretty paramount to put it uh, somewhere that is out of the way that you know kids can't get to it you, you know you don't accidentally hit it with something or if you have a pet uh, get loose in the car that it's just out of the way and when you close the door you don't have access to the switch now if you have any loose cables hanging around you could uh, secure those and that'll complete your look at the installation and some of the features of Roadmaster's remote battery disconnect switch on our 2023 Chevrolet Silverado 1500